Welcome to MRTV's People in XR. This is the podcast that introduces you to the most exciting players in the industry. And here is your host, Sebastian Ong. In this episode of the People in XR podcast, it is my great pleasure to say hello to Li Xunshu, who is marketing manager at Pimax. Hi, Xunshu. How are you doing? Hi, Sebastian. Great, great. How Good. are you doing? I'm also doing really, really well. Yeah, so it's so nice to speak with you. I think lots of people on the internet had no idea that they're actually talking to a woman when they were talking with you at the Pimax forum. <laughs> so first of all, um, tell me a bit about the company that you're working for. I think most of us know what Pimax is and what they're doing, but still I would like to hear it from you. All right, like Pimax, um, Pimax is a um, startup company and we're creating the most immersive vir uh, virtual reality experiences for mostly the hardcore gamers and VR enthusiasts. It's like a high-end PC VR. Right, right. And you made a big splash on the VR scene with your Kickstarter campaign, which was uh, last year. And well, you, you made the, the, most, um, uh, the, the most funded VR Kickstarter, right? Could you tell us a bit more about the Kickstarter campaign? All right, it, the, the Kickstarter campaign was closed last year. I think it's on November 4th. Uh, so that is the most crowdfunded project in VR history. Congratulations. So that, <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, well, that is a really hard year for my uh, for myself because uh, I was preparing and running the campaign for I think the um, most of 2017 I was doing that. Wow, are you were doing the campaign? Team. Wow, that's incredible! So congratulations for making Thank the you. most successful VR campaign ever. It was even more successful than the Oculus Rift Kickstarter. So that is really amazing. And especially doing so from China, it's amazing. Yeah, so um, congratulations again. That was incredible. Yeah, so Pimax, you, um, you are working on the Pimax 8K and 5K and on the whole Pimax um, VR high-end high Headsets. That's the main thing that you're doing at Pimax, right? <clears throat> exactly. Right. Exactly. So <clears throat> we would like to know now what exactly is your role at Pimax? What exactly are you doing at Pimax? So we learned already you were doing the campaign, and um, what are you what are you doing right now? How was your how was your work life at the startup company at Pimax looking like after the came campaign was over? Most of the time. All right. Um, I have been here for like two years. And the first year, you know the story, is Kickstarter. And earlier this year, I was uh, like improving the product for, uh, for everybody uh, together with our community. Um, because at that time, we don't have... Uh, don't have the product ready yet for the market. It's still a prototype. And my job is to collecting feedback from the forums, uh, from all the VR gamers who spend hours and hours in VR. And I, um, I bring all the feedback to the team and push them to do some improvements. <laughs> wow, that is a very important job. So probably because of you, the Pimax headsets are much better now since you have to improve them and get the feedback. So that is amazing. Um, and yeah, that's what I. That's why I just mentioned in the very beginning that I think lots of people will actually be surprised that you are a woman, because they they never saw you. They just saw your name Shunshu in the forums, but I don't think they really knew with who they're talking. So I think um, it's great to have you on the on the show, and it's great that we can get to know you as a person much better. So yeah, you've been working on. On the forum. So, how did it exactly look like working on the forum? How how was it how was it like to to speak with um, all of these backers? Because I think they they had been waiting for the device very long, and actually they're st they're still waiting right now. Most of them, right? Right. Um, you know, the favorite part of my job is 
to speak with the speak with the backers. Um, but I cannot say anything that is not confirmed by the team right. in public. So I feel like a little bit restrict, but <laughs> um, it's, it's a pleasure journey to uh, have you, have Sebastian and have uh, the, Tom, Thomas and have the rest of the testers to work together and uh, to review the product and improve. Um, yeah, and um, I think, I think uh, when we are about to launch the product, I think that is after the beta testing phase, I'm actually meet in person with some of the backers. And that was my favorite experiences in Pimax. Ah, uh, really? So um, yeah. yeah, you did some backer meetups where you showed the product, the Pimax 8K and the new Pimax 5K Plus to the backers. And um, what, what, was, what was so interesting about meeting them? In person, mm. I mean. Yeah, it's very different feeling because when you're looking looking at the forum, those are all the words, uh, sometimes words. some links and videos. Uh, you're just reading and reading um, and with the usernames, IDs. But when you really meet them in person, they are a little bit a little bit different from what you are thinking. They should Perhaps be. they are more polite uh, than in the forum. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, yeah, very different. Yeah. Uh, they are like a growing man uh, with uh, eyes of a children. Uh, so that is full of uh, curiosity and um, innocent. <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know whether that is the right word. Yeah, yeah, but I'm no, very happy yes. to be with them. All right. They are, they are just kind of person that are very generous to give. Like uh, when I asking them if you like to uh, tell us more about your experiences with handset and help the other backer to make a choice. They, they always say yes and they give very, very detailed feedback uh, and, and uh, suggestions to the other backers and they are willing to help each other to set up. Yeah, so I'm very proud of them. I'm very right. proud of this so dedicated gamer community. Yeah, it's a very, it's a very tight community and very, everyone is very, very excited about the product, right? Yeah. So, so that is that is really really interesting. Um, yeah. So it must have been quite a journey for you these two years. First the Kickstarter, <laughs> which was incredible, and then yeah, then the part about improving the product, and uh, and now we are at the stage where you're actually sending out the product. So so how how did it feel for you when when you first sent when you you as a company first sent out the first I don't know. 500 headsets and when you can really um, see the backers receive them. Must have been a good feeling for you, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'm not the one that responsible for uh, shipping right, now. Right. I'm more likely working for some partnerships to, yeah, to having more applications and to improve ourselves in, our, in another way. But I will check the forum, especially the review, uh, there's a category called review right. and I'm checking that part frequently, mostly every day because I wanted to check out how people feel like when they receive this handset. Right. And so, so far, how are the reviews? I mean, uh, we, well, we, we saw my review and Sweet Vivers and Voodoo's, uh, but what do, what do the, the, the real people, <laughs> what do the real people think about your Pimax headsets? Um, they like it, of course. Um, <laughs> I saw a few uh, campaigns, uh, a few like uh, reviews, and they said, oh, the impression was whoa, and the only problem is I cannot go back to the uh, pre previous handset anymore. Right. And I'm very happy to reading these uh, comments because I know how it goes. I know how did this uh, uh, this product from a prototype to a final product, and I understand we should still uh, moving on to improve the software, uh, plus finish our accessories and modules right. to implement and make it, make the experiences more extendable. Right. Yes. Yeah, still, lot, lots of work to do. 
Of course, of course, I totally yeah. understand. So for all of the viewers and listeners who probably do not know what exactly the Pimax 8K and the Pimax 5K Plus is, it is actually a headset with a very wide field of view as compared to the current headset. So the current generation, they probably have a field of view of 110 degrees, but for your device, it's up to 200 degrees. Um, diagonally so that is like a huge huge difference just to clarify it for all the people who have never heard of the Pimax 5k plus or the Pimax 8k before <laughs> yeah so um, now how does your typical work day look like right now at Pimax so what, what time what time um, do you get up and what, what time do you go to work and uh, where is your work tell us a bit more about your work day at Pimax all right, that is will be like a little dif a bit different from time to time. Okay. Last year I was um, uh, finished working very late every day because okay. the campaign, uh, and it's getting better earlier this year. And recently I have to uh, get up very early again because our partners are in the east coast of the states, and we have to do some meetings in the early morning here. Uh, sometimes to reply some emails at uh, late night. Yeah, so my my real work is like uh, in the reality and witness you guys in the virtual reality. <laughs> yeah, that right. is a really a luxury for you guys to have time to enjoy VR. Um, <laughs> usually, I, yeah. I come to the office in the morning to do some important uh, important plannings and reply emails and doing some internal meetings in the afternoon. Okay, great. And then um, how long do you work? Like long hours? Um, what time do you get home or do you have to stay at the company? <laughs> uh, that also depends. Um, but, but I will try my best to not work extra hours because I think everything has a better way to doing it. So I'm trying to, to be more efficient uh, and get at home at around 7 p.m. Okay, that's yeah. good. All right, that's great. Um, I think you are located in uh, Shanghai, China, is that correct? Sorry? You are located in Shanghai, Sh China? Um, that is one of our office. We have the other office uh, for production and we have uh, a U.S. office in San Jose. Ah, really? You're in San Jose. That's so interesting. But um, now you are in Shanghai or where are you right now? Yeah, I like Shanghai. Uh, so I will stay, uh, stay in Shanghai, even if there's another office other where. All right. Got it. So um, you also live in Shanghai? Your, your, your partner is in Shanghai? Yeah, I live here. Okay, great. Yeah, it's a beautiful city. I really, really like it a lot. So, um, yeah, how is how is the working environment like in at Pimax in the Shanghai office? How many people are you? Um, we're like um, around. I think that is 80, 80 people here. Uh, we have two offices in a incubator. Uh, Sebastian, you really need to come to Shanghai and China to do some yeah, uh, some I, videos and I want check to. out our VR park. Yeah. Yes, I really want to. I really want to check out um, Pimax, your 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 office and your production. So yeah, it would be great. It would be great if I can have the chance to come over and take a video. Probably we're going to do it sometime. That would be amazing. Yeah, so... Um, so how big is the office? Give us give us some idea. How does how does it look like? Mm, I can show you actually. Um, oh no! I think <laughs> I think no time. because this is also yeah this is also like a, 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 an audio podcast. So then our listeners won't really be able to see it. So probably if you can just describe it. How many rooms okay, so, are there? Uh, or? Yeah, it's a it's a building in in Zhangjiang, uh, Pudong District in okay. Shanghai. Yes. and there are other uh, startups here. We are one of the startups, and you can find there is a big space for uh, common conferences and meetings. Um, and 
Actually, there are plenty of offices here. I, I don't know right. the exact number of it. Right. Yeah, but Timex is one of the best startups here. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. That is good to know. So is it like you are working um, in a big space with everyone together? Is it like you have cubicles or you have your own desk or you're sitting together with other people at the desk? How is the, the, the normal the normal working style in your startup? Mm, it's an open space. We mm -hmm. have a huge a huge table with everybody uh, uh, sitting there with their computer. Uh, there's new, no cube in this office, okay. so everybody can talk freely. Right. And do, do you do it? Is there lots of talk going on or is everyone simply like working away for themselves? We talk loudly in the office. <laughs> okay, great. Discussing stuff and uh, yeah, okay. That is interesting. I really, really would love to see it. So I, I definitely have to come over to Shanghai and check it out myself. Yeah, um, you, you mentioned that there's lots of other startups in your in your building. Um, the Chinese startup scene is also very exciting. So I have heard. So um, I'm not sure if you know about the difference between American startups and Chinese startups. I'm not sure if you're so familiar with the American or with the Western startup scene. But if yes, could you tell us a bit more about what is probably the difference between Chinese and American startups? Um, uh, after my graduation, I was working in San Francisco Bay Area in some uh, US startup. But still, there is a cultural difference because the founders, uh, the DNA of the founding team are different. Um, and I think uh, the, there are some differences between US and Chinese startup. Um, in China, like the senior level of uh, the government are usually uh, people with uh, engineering background. So as a Chinese startup, it's easier for us to get government support. Um, right, that's one point. But here we have so many computations in the States. We don't have that much computation. I think that is mainly because um, in the States, the startups have to be uh, like technology based, but in China, they are more like uh, business models. So that can be easily duplicated. But in general, I feel like uh, China and US are very similar in many ways. All right. So I suppose what's similar that you have to really work very, very hard <laughs> in startups. Yeah. Right. Especially, actually, I've heard that it's even more crazy in China than in the States. So I think in the States, even though you're working hard, but you're still, <laughs> well, you're not living in, in the startup most of the time. But in China, well, actually, I've heard that for some startups, they even mm. they would even live, sleep in the office. Is that correct? Mm, maybe. <laughs> But have you been to Airbnb office in San Francisco? I, I have, yeah, I have been there. Um, it's nice. Yeah, I have been there once. It's a very nice office. I want to live there. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but, but you know, that is their evil trick. You know, they, they make these offices so nice so that the engineers and uh, the, the people who are working in the startup, that they never leave, right? It's, it's, it's good on the one hand that it's so nice, but on the other hand, it's also, I think, quite an evil trick to make it so beautiful. Yeah, that, that's a s smart move to provide like provide breakfast, lunch and dinner. Uh, so people are uh, can work there for like several hours more per day right. to compensate the uh, lunch fee. But <laughs> <laughs> that is a very smart move for the startups. Exactly. I think at the Airbnb office, you can even drink as much wine and beer as you want. So that, that yeah. would be a very evil place for me to be at. <laughs> so um, I, I'm wondering for you, um, in your office, is it, um, is it like also that you have some, some, some lunch for free or, or is it so cheap anyways there that it doesn't matter? Um, we, we have free breakfast here. And uh, we we were having we, we will have some uh, free lunch before, but uh, we prefer to eat outside to get some fresh air. <laughs> <Right>. So <laughs> yeah, the company <laughs> need to get out sometimes. Yeah, 
Yeah, so, so instead, the company gave us some, some uh, lunch fees every day. Okay, great. Yeah. That is good. So, um, yeah. How does how is the how is the the culture in in, in the Pimax company? Tell us, but what is what is special? What is what is distinctive for for the Pimax company culture? The the founding team are engineers, so uh, the culture is basically engineering culture. Uh, so our teammates are proud of the product, and they are only confident when they have the product nicely done. So that's why they, they can't they can't hide the product. When they have the some innovations, they want to show show the community immediately instead of hiding it. Right, right. I get yeah. it. So so th that makes lo lots of sense now that you're seeing it. <laughs> so that's why we got to see like the OLED version, for example, of the Pimax, probably. Because you're just the engineers are just so proud of it. Right. <laughs> and the 5K plus. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So so that is that is truly interesting. But I, I'm wondering, like, internally, do you have lots of discussions about uh, the company's strategy? Like, like, for, like questions like, hey, should we actually, from a business standpoint, should we show that OLED device now? Or or is it just like, uh, OK, the, the, the management team will, will just do it? Or do you have lots of internal discussions about these things? That is a very good question. Um, you know, as a uh, as a junior staff uh, and as a junior staff, yes. uh, sometimes um, I'm wondering whether this is the right right thing to do. But um, the management just convinced me. Right. <laughs> because uh, um, I feel feel like it's. Doing nothing wrong to give the best of uh, of uh, the team to our yeah. users. But you know what? Actually, I think that this kind of behavior has a certain charm to it. It's really like not like the big companies, right? The big companies, of course, everything is more like a business decision. But for you, well, you are so close to the to the community. You simply want to give them the best stuff, right? So actually. It is also very sympathetic, I think. Yeah, that's that's um because we um, have more freedom because we are uh, small now and we can do something that based on our own judgment and own decision. Right, right. So who knows what's going to happen next? So actually, that's also interesting. There might be some surprises. We don't know yet what exactly is going to happen, but it never gets boring with Pimax. <laughs> that is for sure. So um, <laughs> also for you, right? It's like, well, every day is a new adventure. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> right. Sometimes it's so drama in the forum and yeah. I even want to buy some popcorn. <laughs> Yes, me too. Me too. Actually, it's like, wow, sometimes uh, the discussions in your forum get so heated, right? And people start to fight with each other, even though actually every everybody wants the same, right? Everybody wants Pimax to be successful. Everybody simply wants to get the headsets. But then there's so many discussions. Sometimes it's getting out of hands, I think. <laughs> yeah, that is in the case. There are a really large group of still hungry enthusiasts waiting for exactly. big FOVs. Exactly. They're so excited about it and all the emotions are so strong, right? So things are getting crazy sometimes. But it's it's also a, like a typical thing about, about Pimax. It's interesting, this forum. Um, yeah, so tell us probably a bit more about um, the Chinese virtual reality scene. Are Chinese people excited about the technology? Is it successful in China? Is it probably more successful than in the West? Or what would you think? Mm. You know, we have backers from uh, over 70 countries. 70 and countries. for yeah. each country, there is only very small market that is uh, looking for high-end VR. That is the uh, same story in China. In China, we also have some backers. But like all the other countries, not too many. Um, so I would say, yes, there are enthusiast market in China. And just like in the States and the other countries, we also have 
larger market for mobile VR. Oh, really? Okay, <laughs> got yeah. it. So, so which devices are the most successful? The, the Xiaomi one, the Oculus Go, or what is like the, the most successful headset right now? I think that was uh, Oculus. Uh, I, I can't I can tell now because I have right. to uh, go back and check out the sure. report recently. Right. But it seems <laughs> yeah. like the, those standalone headsets, they seem to be quite successful in China. Mm, and in the other countries yeah, of as well. Yeah. yeah, well, that's right. That's for sure. But uh, so in general, the Chinese are interested in virtual reality? Mm, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's the same, same story. In every country, we have different types of people. Yeah. So it's, it's not like uh, these are Chinese. Those are uh, people in United States. Those are Americans. Mm -hmm. It's like we have different uh, people from yeah, different course. background right. in all the countries. So sure. yes, we are excited about PCVR and at the same, same time, there are still people who can't afford the graphics cars of and course. they wanted to try out sure. some, some cardboard and some mobile VR first sure. before they invite, invest largely in PC. Right, of course. I mean, especially for what you are doing, you are like um, servicing like the high end market. You need these GDX 1080 Ti, RDX 2080 Ti, you, you need these really expensive cards. So yeah, only a certain group of people will be able to afford it. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, I would like to understand a bit more about about Pimax. So at Pimax, what is your what is the mission and vision of Pimax? The vision is to create the most immersive VR. Uh, you know the story. And the mission, um, because the core team have many years experiences in um, visual and in the display industry. So that's why we have the capability to do that. Um, and our team are, have a very, uh, we have some background in, in virtual reality already. So that's, that's, that's why we can do that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and our core value uh, is to have our users first because um, my personal belief is that um, only people spending hours and hours in one product have the saying of how good it is. And um, the project should not only belong to the creators, but also the like-minded people that choose to participate in that. Right. Yeah, it, it does feel like that. It's like you're spending lots of time on the forums and you really take time to really meet the backers. I was actually surprised that you would actually really make up all these backer meetings and really meet them so often, even though now you have already made these meetings quite a lot, right? I think I would say like you already know what they have to say, but you still keep on meeting them. So it seems like the community aspect has really a, a very big importance to Pimax. Is that right? Yes, that's very important for us, uh, especially for VR. It's a very niche market now. Yes. So, yeah. Right. So that's, We know our target. Yeah, you know your target. So the target is now the VR enthusiasts, the VR enthusiasts who want the, the best immersion possible. That's that's your target right now. But do you think in the future you also would like to go more for the mass market? In the future, um, I'm not sure yet because, you know, everybody wanted to be in the most immersive VR, but not everybody can afford it. By affordable, um, we're not only referring to the money, and we are also referring to the time. You need to have some free time in addition to have the uh, disposable income to spending in VR. Um, so I, I think um, PC VR would still be for niche market unless we have some step back to make some toys uh, for the mass market. But right. that is against our vision because our, our vision is to create the most immersive VR. 
Okay, yeah. great. So it's got, it's a it's a big difference as compared to, for example, Oculus, who wants to reach the mass market, and well, they are not working on like the most immersive they could do. Probably they could also do a high FOV headset, but they don't. They want to make this standalone headset that everyone and their grandmother can use. So it is it's a, it's really a big difference. Very interesting. So you will stay tuned to the high end and after the Pimax 8K, there will probably be a Pimax 16K or something. Uh, I don't know. That is <laughs> in Robin's mind. I yes. wanted to know. But he <laughs> hasn't tell me yet. <laughs> okay. Now you're completely focused on, on the product at hand right now, of course. Yeah. Right. So um, I'm wondering, for for your company you're a small company right now you're like how many people are you overall right now 80 you, you mentioned or how many are you overall uh, less than 100 wow less than 100 okay that is yeah. that is still a small company however actually you are trying to get to the western market and you're trying to get some market share from yeah from the big ones right from from HTC from Oculus mm. How does it feel to be in that kind of position, to be a small Chinese startup, but to try to conquer the world? How, how is it feeling for you? Um, we, we can never challenge the uh, established companies, the big firms um, in the mass market because they are selling the product to millions or millions of people. We only selling to a very small group of uh, hardcore gamers and they are enthusiasts so we can never compete with them so <laughs> what we are doing is just focus on what we are doing okay um yeah with our limited resources right right so you're actually not really thinking so much about like oh what is HTC doing or what is what what is oculus doing you're simply doing what you're doing and try to do this well yes Okay. It's already lots of tasks to do. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think so. Yeah. It's it's lots of work. Anyways, um, I would like to ask you about the challenges that you have as a small company working on this one product, trying to make the most immersive headset that is more immersive than the Vive Pro and the Rift and so on and so forth. Well, there have been quite quite a lot of challenges for this Kickstarter campaign, right? It's, you you hoped to deliver it in in January of, of this year, two thousand eighteen. Now it's the end of this year, getting getting uh, yeah to the to the new year, and well, you're still now sending out the units. So so, what kind of biggest challenge do you have right now, and how how do you want to overcome them? Um, I think uh, in terms of challenge, uh, um, the delivery, I, I don't think that is challenge. I think the most challenge uh, thing is the talent. We really need to hire more talent now. Right. And we are hiring the hand of US US market for Pamax right now. Oh, the head so, of, the head of and, and, okay. Right. Yeah, the hand of U.S. market. So if anyone interested, please show me a <laughs> private message on the forum. Okay, that's interesting. So if anybody is interested and has the skills <laughs> to become the head of Pimax in the U.S., send a message to Xunxu and you can get into further talk. So so this person, this person who will become the, the head of Pimax in the U.S., what kind of um, yeah traits should he bring? What kind of background should he be like? Mm. Uh, we, we have some listed uh, qualification there, but I think um, the most important thing is uh, he or she have to be have some kind of a chemical with the team. Right. <laughs> so we have uh, actually we have scheduled some interviews next week uh, with me and Robin. So we're going to talk through Skype with that person. And yeah, it all depends on the chemical. Okay, yeah, sure. I think that's that's gonna be uh, very, very important to have this person. I've, because like until this moment in time, even though you want to somehow conquer the the Western market, there's still no no Western people in your company, right? Every everyone is Chinese. 
Yeah, but we have many partners yeah. that is Western people. Uh, yeah, and we work, um, especially me, working with them closely. Yeah, right. Every single day. Yeah, yeah. sure, I'm sure. That's incredible. Like, you're doing such a great job, and uh, it's amazing, actually. So, um, Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Um, yeah, so this is interesting. So, actually, right now, you're building the U.S. team? Right. Okay, so there's nobody there now, but now you start with the head of the U.S. team, and then... Uh, this this person should um, build the team in the U.S. Um, yeah, um, yeah, and uh, Robin is even looking for co-founders in the states. So oh, really? that okay. person will be very important to shape the DNA for Pamax in the states. All right, that's really interesting. Wow. So perhaps I should apply yeah. for it. <laughs> But 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 do they need to be American or can they also be German? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> okay, that is really interesting. Yeah, but I'm I'm very busy here with MRTV, so I don't think I can apply for it. But it would be a, it would be a very very exciting job, I think. I mean, super exciting, really really exciting to to be in the states and to build it. So so this will be a very very important important part right so it's not just like the head of the the u.s team but even more like a co-founder wow so then you must be very then you must be very very careful with finding that person yeah that's why the biggest challenge is to find the right people right right that's I think so, so important it's the most important it's really really the most important and it's really not easy to find the right talent they would kind of fit into your into your company culture. That's really really tough. So um, may I know like how many people have applied already, and and how is it going? Your search for that head of the team, head of the U.S. team. Um, I have several resume resume with me, and at the same time, I'm looking for reference from from our media friends. Uh, um, yeah, somebody's uh, many people. There, there's, it's not many people. There are several people uh, applied, and there are several very nice people in VR industry uh, looking for the right candidates for us. So okay. we really appreciate that, right. and we plan to find the uh, the candidates from the forum, our current users first, oh, really? and the uh, references. Mm -hmm. Yeah, references from our friends. Okay, so so probably someone from the forum will become the next, the next head of US. Who knows? Really hope so. Oh, really? Wow, really. that's yeah. you really would like to have somebody from the community to to head Pimax US. Yeah, so they understand the core value of Pimax. All right. Okay. Wow, that's that's really interesting. That is absolutely interesting. Um, yeah. So good luck for for finding that person and. Uh, well, um, you, you just said like you're even looking for a co-founder, but w what would that mean for that person? So a co-founder in what kind of terms? In terms of um, stocks or, or what kind of, what, what does the person have to bring? Or what do you, exa what do you exactly mean like co-founder level? Mm, uh, the current team of Pemex, uh, their strengths is in engineering and production. Right. So we are looking for someone that is uh, can uh, can make up the the Business. capability differences right. with our current team. Um, he or she needs to be capable to uh, 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 find fundings and also capable to do branding and become the rep of Pamax in the states okay. because you know there are time difference between China and the States. So that would be better if we have someone locate yeah, absolutely. Uh, there and present in the meetups and conferences of and course. speak there. Of course. Fund partners. Yeah. Right, right. Funding is, of course, important for you guys. And uh, yeah, makes sense to build that US team. I think that's going to be very interesting. I think it's very, very important for you. So that's great. So, um, yeah, so big challenges is the talent. That's that's what you said. I 
that's normally always the case with startups finding the right people and good luck for finding that person or that team in the US. So, and, and what do you think is Pimax doing great now? And um, yeah, where do you think you must improve in the future? Doing great. We are doing great um, in terms of listening to our core users. Um, and we are becoming more and more transparent uh, about uh, the information necessary for the, for the community. Um, I think in the future, we need to, yeah, like I m we mentioned before, we need to think twice before each move because our team is growing and our business is growing and we have more and more uh, customers. So we have to consider many factors. Okay, Xunchu. So now that we've talked more about, about Pimax, I would also like to get to know you a bit better. <laughs> so how did you get to working at Pimax? What was your 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 story what is your story about getting into the vr and getting into the xr industry that is really a coincidence um i was looking for a job that that can allow me to starting some kind of community from the scratch when i get back from uh, from the uh, state to shanghai um but the positions we i can find by that time are mostly in big corporations. Um, so uh, I was not really like my job by them, um, but I'm, I met one of my clients in Shanghai. Um, so he was the co-founder uh, uh, in Pimax. So he, he introduced me <laughs> to, to the position in Pimax. All right, so, but um, you speak English very well. So you, you studied in, in the US. Tell us a bit more about how you got to where you are right now in terms of like education and in terms of wanting to work for startups. Because you mentioned before that you've been working in some startups in the Bay Area. Okay, my education, my major was, uh, my, my major in college is human resources. Oh, perfect. Great. That's, <laughs> yeah, it's that's, that's not perfect. engineering. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I uh, went to the States for a master program and then I worked there for uh, like, I think that is one or two years. Um, I started to work for the, for the, for my school, uh, during my master program. Um, yeah, so, so that was my experiences in the Bay area. Um, mm -hmm. um so my college, uh, we are teaching in English. So, yeah, that, that's why um, um, I, I can speak uh, a little bit better English, uh, especially in business. <laughs> yeah, right. but th that is still different from the native speakers. <laughs> yeah, but I think your English is really good. So I think you can do business well. I've spoken to other people in business <laughs> where their English is much worse than yours. I think your English is great. So, yeah, you. so you... That's great to know that you studied human resources. So for these reasons, you probably, that's why you know that culture is so important in the company, right? And to hire the right people is actually everything, right? It's actually your company can, can live or die just by these decisions who you hire. So therefore, I think it's great that you, that you studied that. Um, so actually now in the, in the, in the process of, of building the U S team, um, do you have, uh, like an important role in, in, in finding the right person? All right. <laughs> uh, yeah, my, one of, of my goal for, I think this quarter and maybe next year, earlier next year will be finding the right person. Right. <laughs> yes, that's so much burden. <laughs> that's oh, really man. not easy. That's really not easy. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> right, right. Okay, but is it also your interest? This, this, yeah. this work in this area. <laughs> that, that's just so exciting. I mean, in, in Pimax, I have uh, lots of lots of opportunities to try new stuff, like start a campaign, uh, and doing a beta testing try some new manners of doing things. 
Um, and the Pemex really gave me the opportunity to do that. They are very open to new ideas and innovations. Right. Yeah, that's, it's always interesting to work in a startup because you don't just do one thing. <laughs> you you got to do more, more than one thing. So, so in your time at Pimax, for you, what was the most exciting part? Most exciting part? Yes. Uh, they're all, all exciting. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah i i don't really know which one is more exciting <laughs> okay so 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 which part was then the toughest part where you thought like oh no damn why why did i do this to me why am i working in a startup company oh yeah <laughs> that one you know <laughs> for, for that part uh, it was beta testing oh really yeah for beta testing um it was uh, harder for me than having a Kickstarter campaign or having partnerships now mm, because um, I cannot tell too much, but people are asking and I know they are eager to know more about the product. But the good thing is on September 16th, the release, uh, the time we released all the reviews, that was like, whoa, that's so cool. All and, right, right. Oh, and that one was my mother's birthday as well. Oh, perfect. So you got some yeah. cake as well. Yeah, and, and the coincidence, <laughs> uh, another coincidence is uh, when we launched Kickstarter last year, that was my birthday. Oh, wow. <laughs> that is good. So you have lots of great, great days. <laughs> Yeah, there must have been a very exciting birthday then. You know what? I can really relate to that so much because, well, most of the viewers and most of the listeners will know that I was part of that beta testing of that group of people who were beta testing that. And well, I, I had the device here and I was testing it. And so many people asked me, hey, Sebastian, tell me, tell me is the device great is it really the real thing and i can't say anything right i cannot even tell my community anything it's oh i was so terrible and then finally i can make the review and then i can tell everyone yes the device is really good and it was it was really a good feeling to to send out the the review <laughs> so in that moment you guys were um how did it um did you did you all watch the reviews together? I mean, you got the reviews from, from me, from Sweeviver and from Voodoo, those video reviews. How, how did you perceive them when you, when you got them? They were quite positive. And did you watch them together or did you make a little celebration? Tell us a bit more about that part. <laughs> you mean the order? I mean, I mean, when, when the, the moment when you watched the, the reviews, the video reviews from me, Sweeviver and Voodoo. Oh, that was a weekend, uh, ah, right? Yes, I think yes, yes. Yeah, so I was staying at home and open YouTube and open all of your channels. <laughs> right. It's like a big dinner with all the dishes I love. <laughs> nice, nice. And then you watch them and yeah, tell us what's a good feeling. Probably, probably yes, right? Yeah, um, you have different styles. For right. you, it's, mm, it's like very straightforward to the point, yes. uh, very professional. And uh, for Thomas, that's, uh, that is in Germany. So the German language, <laughs> but, yeah. So I, I read I the subtitles. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And Thomas is really good at gaming. And yeah, I, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's uh, relaxing watching him play games. Oh, okay, um, good. Yeah, and for Sweet Viber, that is the most detailed review yeah, I have ever seen. Amazing, amazing. He, he so like covered every, every single thing. Yeah, and the best part is he even uh, gave us a bookmark of uh, the whole review. That is, will be very helpful. Yes. So, um, actually, I like the background music a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so That's so cool. I, I just look, look, look through the, the uh, bookmark and pick uh, different bookmarks I'm interested in. Yeah. Right. Um, but but at, at the end of the day, I, I try to 
uh, watch all your videos, but you made so many videos on your channels. Right, it's tough to I, watch I, them all. I, yeah, so that is also the the part of luxury in in the community. Many people have the time to read, uh, to watch all the videos. But yes. I'm trying, but I can't. It's, it's, you cannot. It's too many, right? Oh, yeah, that's it's, it's really crazy. Yeah. So for all of all of the people who are who are listening to this podcast now or who, who are watching it now, I'm going to link the the the, the review videos of the Pimax 8K and 5K Plus in the description. So if you would like to to watch the the video reviews, just like um, Shunchu did, you can do that. You can watch the review of me and of Survivor and of Voodoo. And I think that should be pretty interesting. So you know what we're talking about. So after you have watched all the videos of me, Survivor, and Voodoo, you must have been in a very good mood, right? Because the the, the review the reviews were quite positive. Yeah, <laughs> um, I'm I'm a little bit worried because uh, <laughs> we are still improving. Yes. A, a lot of things with uh, software and accessories, but I like I, I like the videos. I like the reviews. Right, of course. Cool. Great. Yeah, that was a very exciting time. And I really can so much relate to what you said that it was a tough time, that that better testing phase, but good that it's over and great that you're sending them out right now. So for, I still want to know a bit more about you. So you you studied um, HR in, in the US. Why did you why did you um, go to the US? Oh, I was studying human resources in Hong Kong, Hong Kong Baptist University. All right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. So, so my, I also studied in was, Hong Kong. Uh, um, it, my school is in uh, Guangdong Province. All right, that's so, Hong Kong. Okay. Yeah. So that is not exactly uh, Hong Kong Baptist, but it's a, a okay. school in China. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but Got it. but yeah. But it has it has ties to Hong Kong. Okay, got it. Yeah, so I have some summer programs here, and um, yeah, that, uh, and we are using English material for right. all the lectures, and right. we have to answer questions in English. For each class, only five percent of the students can get A for each semester. Wow. Yeah, so it was uh, lots of computations even more computations than we were in senior high school. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot of uh, uh, works and quizzes and examinations by that time. Yes, I know that in, in China, you are very, very competitive with your, um, yeah, with high school and then to get a good university to go to, right? You have to make like this big test where you compete against everyone from all of the country and then only the very best will can choose the university they go to. It's it's more tough than in the West, I think, to go to a good university, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. I like my university because when I picking uh, all the universities, uh, that one was emphasized uh, liberal art. That means in the college stage, we are not focusing on something. Um, that is very uh, related to our future work, but rather we are reading some literatures and we are having some emotional intelligence training. Um, so that makes us um, be better prepared for the future challenges um, in, in our mentally and emotionally. Um, it's, it's more like learning the world rather than learning specific tasks. That's great. That's that's a good thing to do. And then um, why did you make the decision to go to the US for your English or because you always wanted to see how it's like to live in the West? I don't want to go straight forward to find that job. All right. After <laughs> my graduate. That makes sense. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and still, I'm, I'm very into cross culture right. things. So I wanted to have some different experiences. And right. then, then I can make a decision whether, whether I want to stay in the U.S. or I want to go back to China. Actually, I even got H-1B. That is a, uh, like a type of, types of uh, per permit to work in the States. But when I got that, I go back to China because I oh, really? feel like I don't, I don't really 
the person that can fit in the uh, fit in the um, companies in the states, and I'm more willing to go back to China and working for some some our own brand All right. to help the brand to Great. go to the other countries. Wow, that's so so exciting. So why would you say that you are not fit to work in a, in a U.S. company? Because that was so comfortable <laughs> working in the <laughs> States. <laughs> that yeah. is so funny. <laughs> yeah, right. Like 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 these Airbnb offices and all these beautiful places and the good food, right? <laughs> it's, it's too comfortable. Right. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm really afraid if I working there longer, I may not be able to come back to the right. very competitive right. environment in China. And especially I'm, I'm not an engineer. So my uh, con connections in the States cannot uh, come back with me to China. Right. Uh, okay, yeah. cool. Well, that, that makes sense. So you put a lot of thought into it for your future. So Right. So you, you prefer to be in China for this tough competition and stay up to speed with that. Cool. That, that is really some exciting insight. <laughs> so there is a big difference between Chinese companies and US companies, it seems like. <laughs> Very interesting. Yeah. Cool. I, want, I would like to understand more about um, how was it when the first time you tried VR? Was it at Pimax or when did you first try VR? Yeah, that uh, my first VR is Pimax 4K. Okay, good. <laughs> How was it? What do yeah. you think? For me, um, I don't really like the small FOV. <laughs> the moment I put on the handset. Nice, nice. Okay. Because my imagination should be VR is a virtual reality that people can live in, but I cannot live in with the small goggles. Right. It's like watching TV. It's not like <laughs> VR. <laughs> okay. Got it. So, so Pimax 4K, no. HTC Vive, no. Oculus Rift, no. You needed something better. <laughs> yeah, but I like the, how crispy uh, that was in uh, Pimax 4K. Yes. And when I uh, finally put on the 8K, I, I was like, wow, <laughs> I liked it. I, okay. I want to live here. <laughs> But then I have lots of work to do in Pimax, so I don't have time for that. Right. So you, you you cannot spend so much time on it. Okay. Of course, because you have so many things to do right now. But um, in general, what, um, what do you think about VR? I mean, do you do you enjoy it? Do you think it's the, 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 the big future of computing? Tell us a bit more what do you think about VR. Um... Do you, do you enjoy playing games or do you enjoy doing other things like watching a movie in VR? What do you like about it? Uh, for, for the most time, I was trying demos uh, from our partners, like uh, the send, send in, enabling model uh, demo and the wireless, de wireless demo. Uh, and for, for gaming, from when I was a, from my, my childhood, I, I like to watch my father play games. <laughs> 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 That's um, funny. Yeah, um, and I I really like to having my my face really close to the screen. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I know moving, that too. Moving yeah. the screen and imagine myself in that game. So it's like a dream come true for me <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah, because now you have the screens very very close to your eyes. <laughs> yeah, but. Um, so for now, we're still looking for killing content. Right. Hardware is only a small part of the whole VR experiences, and we need more uh, developers to involve in building new content for big FOV, because for now, they are building for small FOV. We can still use that, but they can do more details on our preferred visions, and they can change and do more innovations on the content, right? right. So I, I'm not really sure about the direction of VR now because there are so many standalone VR and mobile VR out there. Um, they are good to educate the whole big market about what is VR, but if everybody um, with our limited resources 
are creating content for mobile VR, this would be going slower right. for PC VR and Got immersive it. VR. Shinshu, then you simply have to sell more Pimax 8K and 5K Plus. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah, so for everyone who is interested in, in ordering one, they can still do so on PimaxVR.com, right? Yeah, on our web store. On, on the web store. So yeah, if everyone now is a bit more excited to find out more about the, the wide field of view headset, you can go to PimaxVR.com and check it out. Check out the reviews from me, Sweetviver, and Voodoo, and yeah, find out more about the Pimax 8K. So, uh, what do you think um, from your from your feeling about the VR industry? What do you think? How long will it still take until everyone is using VR? How long will it take until VR is like a mass market phenomenon? I don't know, really. <laughs> okay. I really don't know. Yes. That depends on how long it takes for us to have. Uh, lower graphics cards requirements. We are working together with our partners on, on this. Mm, um, I don't know how long it takes. And also depending on how many content, uh, how good the content are there. Because um, when people get into our new technology, it's usually a killing content. A strong reason why they have to buy this handset. That's true. You need the, the killer app, the killer application that makes people want to, yeah, to use to use the VR. That makes sense. But anyways, right. I still want to know, like your estimation, how many years? Just just guess from your feeling. <laughs> Will we still need to and everyone is using uh, VR? Everyone was using VR. Yeah, like like lots of people, much more than now. Um I'm uh my my wish is five years. Okay. But I don't know if I, we can make it in five years, because right. you know how many decades we have in in our whole life, yes. and how many decades we are capable um, of using VR. Because we we at least need our vision very well. Yeah, that's so, true. Yeah. Yeah, and we we need to have our. Um, and and we have to make sure we can be uh, very uh, uh, quick in our mind to That's play right. games yes. and try different stuff without right. any uncomfortable feelings. Right. So I think we don't have too much years in our whole life. So I hope it's gonna be faster, better <laughs> in five yeah. years. Okay, That's perfect. I hope so too. And I think that's a great last word. Let's hope that uh, VR can get mass adoption sooner. So Shunshu, so I want to thank you so much for this amazing interview. It was so great to get to know you better, to get to know better what you do at Pimax and simply to understand Pimax better. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Sebastian. Uh, the last thing I want to add mm -hmm. is I want to say thank you for all the community members uh, especially our moderators in the community. Um, if you notice, we have a group of uh, community leaders on the forum, and, and they are actually contribute to uh, to the forum by answering questions from the the users. I have one very um, great memory is that when they, they when they have vacation. In the other country, they still have their mobile phone mm -hmm. with them wow. to help the, the all, all the backers and users. So really, thank you. Thank wow. you so much. That is a fantastic last word. So thank you so much to the very active Pimax community who is yeah helping the, the, the company and the whole VR to go forward. Perfect. Yeah, they are the driving force of the, the whole industry. Force. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Xunxu. Thank you so much for being a very important part of this episode of People in XR. It has been amazing and looking forward to see what Pimax is going to do next. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much, Sebastian.
And that's it for this episode of People in XR. If you made it this far, then probably you like the show. So why don't you leave a review at your favorite podcast provider so more people can find the show or directly share it with your fellow VR enthusiasts. My name is Sebastian Arm, and I'm looking forward to meet you in the next episode.